Congratulations. 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 You going to take notes, Carl? Is there any notes? I think Jerry's yeah. going to watch. Jerry told me that she was going to watch this after the fact and take minutes. Oh, okay. But, Just fine. but if somebody in here would want to volunteer, I'll tell you the easiest way to do it. Take the agenda and save it as meeting minutes. And then it's not that hard to do okay. in the next few days. All right. But I did, don't look at me. <laughs> John, I was looking to Michael. <laughs> you know, these guys put off me a couple of weeks. Ago. All members are present except for Paul. And uh, I can look over the minutes from uh, January 5th, 2023. I don't have them either. That's interesting. They were sent out of Yeah, I know. I just didn't realize that they were going to print them like normal. So I can find them. That'll look really nice. Yeah. Do you want to postpone them? Or... No, we postpone them. Because what I want. So we'll postpone uh, number four all the minutes. And then uh, next on the agenda is Mahoney. And I don't know how to say this. Sable. Sable. Mm -hmm. Auto presentation. Okay. Um, can you uh, hear me all right? Very well. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mike Van Deventer. I'm a partner at Mahoney Sable, uh, ultimately responsible for overseeing the audit work uh, for the town. Uh, joining me this evening is Samantha Thomas. Uh, Sam was the uh, senior manager on the audit, really responsible for the the day to day execution of our of our audit procedures. I'm so happy to uh, be here this evening and appreciate you allowing us to uh, to do this remotely. Um, this evening, I'm going to cover uh, really a, a presentation that will go over the uh, scope of work that was performed, uh, the re audit reports that were issued. I'll provide some overall financial highlights, uh, and then I will uh, make our required communications and certainly be happy to under answer any questions uh, that you may have uh, at the end of the presentation. So with that, I'm going to share the screen. Okay, and everyone can see the presentation okay? Yep, it does. Perfect. All right, as far as the scope of work, again, we did perform an audit of the town's financial statements. We performed that audit in accordance with both the auditing standards issued by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, as well as the government auditing standards issued by the Government Accountability Office. Uh, in addition, based on the level of federal and state funds that were received and expended by the town, we did perform uh, both federal and state single audits. The federal single audit was performed in accordance with the un uniform administrative requirements, and the state single audit was performed in accordance with the state single audit act. Uh, in addition, we do also perform an agreed upon procedures engagement on the end of school year reports that are filed by the school district with the state of Connecticut Department of Education. In addition to those uh, attest services, we do perform some non-audit services for the town. So we do assist in the preparation of the financial statements, the schedule of expenditures of federal awards uh, and state financial assistance, as well as the related notes. Uh, we also assist in converting the town's governmental fund financial statements to the government-wide financial statements. Uh, in order for the firm to be able to perform these non-audit services and remain independent of the town, uh, management is required to uh, ultimately accept responsibility for those services. Um, and again, Leanne uh, Palladino as the finance director has ultimately accepted responsibility for those services. Uh, in connection with the audit, we do issue a number of reports. Uh, the main report is the report on the financial statements. Uh, we did issue unmodified clean opinions on your financial statements. Again, an unmodified opinion is expressed when we've concluded that the financial statements uh, are presented fairly in all material respects in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted uh, in the United States of America. And that is as established by the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. Um, I'd like to remind the board that our opinion does provide reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from a material misstatement, whether due to error or fraud. Uh, so we do, we do utilize sampling in our audit methodology. Uh, we do not test every transaction. 
There are estimates included in the financial statements, and as such, we cannot provide absolute assurance. Uh, in addition to the report on the financial statements, we also issue a report on compliance and on internal control over financial reporting. It's important to note in this report, we do not actually express an opinion on the town's compliance with laws or regulations or on the effectiveness of the town's internal control over financial reporting. Uh, our responsibility is to the extent we identify a material non-compliance of a law or regulation or a significant deficiency or material weakness in the town's internal controls over financial reporting, uh, we're required to include it in this report uh, and we did not identify any such matters. In connection with the federal single audit, we issue a report on compliance at the federal award level. Uh, in this report, we do actually express an opinion on your compliance with your major programs. For fiscal year 2022, the total federal awards that were expended by the town was about 2.8 million. Uh, the major program was the disaster uh, reimbursement grants for presidentially declared disasters. Um, we did issue unmodified clean opinions on compliance over that program. Uh, and we did not report any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses over grant compliance. In connection with the state single audit, we issue a similar report on your state major programs. Uh, for fiscal year 2022, the total state financial assistance expended by the town was about 1.3 million. Um, of that, about 831,000 was considered non-exempt and is not subject to our compliance testing. Uh, the major programs were the uh, Town Aid Road Grant and the Let's Go Connecticut Transportation Ramp Up Program, which uh, both were funded by the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Uh, we did issue unmodified clean opinion on your compliance over those programs. And again, not reporting any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses over your grant compliance. Uh, this next section goes over your financial highlights. Again, there's a lot of financial information included in the town's financial statements. Um, these are very high level um, highlights. Uh, certainly to the extent we identified anything of um, significance, we would uh, include it in these communications. Uh, in terms of the general fund, the original budget did not provide for the use of fund balance to balance your revenues and expenditures. Uh, your final budget did include additional appropriations of 55,000. Your actual budgetary surplus for the year was an increase of about 1.7 million, uh, of which approximately 1.5 million was subsequently authorized to be transferred to your capital and non-recurring fund. Um, that resulted in an overall net change in your fund balance of about 176,000. Uh, overall, the surplus was driven by revenues, which were about 1.4 million more than budgeted, and that was due to favorable collections on property taxes, state grants, town clerk fees, and building permits. Uh, and then your overall expenditures were about 334,000 less than budgeted. Um, but again, no budgetary instances of non-compliance were identified in connection with our audit work. Uh, this slide goes over your governmental fund financial highlights. Uh, again, this includes your general fund as well as all of your capital and special revenue funds. Uh, your combined ending fund balances totaled approximately 18.6 million, which was an increase of about 2.3 million from the prior year. Uh, of that 18.6 million, uh, 8.7 million is in your general fund, uh, which was an increase of about 328,000 from the prior year. Uh, of the 8.7 million, 8.2 million was considered unassigned, and that represented about 17% or two months of your fiscal year 2023 budgetary expenditure appropriations. Um, and again, that percentage is uh, right on target with what the GFOA uh, recommends um, municipalities maintain as an unassigned fund balance. Uh, in terms of your capital project fund, that had an ending fund balance of about 3 million, which was an increase of about 544,000 from the prior year. Uh, the capital non-recurring fund had an ending fund balance of about 4 million, again, an increase of about 420,000 from the prior year. Uh, the economic development fund had an ending fund balance of about 79,000, uh, that was an increase of about 43,000 from the prior year. And then all of your other funds combined um, had an ending fund balance of about 2.7 million, uh, which was an increase of about 980,000 from the prior year. Uh, again, there are supplemental schedules that include all of your funds. Um, and um, I do wanna point out that there were no fund deficits that were identified within the governmental funds. 
Uh, next slide goes over your government-wide financial highlights. Um, again, the focus on the government-wide financial statements are really on your long-term liabilities. Um, so this includes all of your governmental funds converted to a full accrual basis of accounting. Um, so it does include capital assets as well as all of your long-term liabilities. Uh, in terms of the town's long-term liabilities, um, the town is reporting a net pension liability of about 7.1 million. Uh, that was an increase of about 7 million from the prior year. Um, that increase was really driven by two factors. Uh, one, a decrease in the discount rate from 7% to 6.75%, uh, as well as the amortization of current year market losses on plan assets. Um, in terms of the net pension liability for the fire company plan, that had an ending uh, liability of about 1.4 million. Um, again, an increase of about 551,000 from the prior year, uh, also driven by those market losses on plan assets. Um, so again, when you're looking at your, your net pension liabilities, uh, those will fluctuate year over year, depending on the uh, results of the, of the uh, return on investments. Um, again, if you remember last year, I think the town had significant market gains, um, which resulted in an increase in your funding percentage. Uh, a lot of those gains were lost uh, during this, this current year. The town is also... Can I ask also... a question? Can I ask right. a question? Sure. So, I'm, then one of the, the net pension liabilities, it says that 7.1 million, and that's an increase of 7 million. Correct. Last year it was flat. Yeah. Yeah. Last last year you had significant market gains, uh, which resulted in a uh, basically an almost a hundred percent funded plan. All right. So I didn't increase by seven million. It just the difference is one year it was seven point one million. One year it was seven million eighty eight. Was that no, right? Increased by seven million. Last year it was flat. Right. It's a long-term liability yeah. because the market went down, yeah. so our long-term liability went up, I guess. Right? right. The year before, we actually had a swing the other way because of all the market gains. But that all gets, yeah. it's, it's hard to look at a pension from every year because the liabilities can swing. Uh, that's why when you work with an actuary, they try to do like a five-year smoothing. Correct. Hey, uh, if you fund this much, you're going to be good. And that's where we are right now in terms of funding it. The actual year to year liabilities, you know, it's tough to look at that. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good question. We're still 77% funded. Right. So we're, we're well funded, comparatively speaking, and based on over the last 11, 12 years. That's good. Correct. Yep. So the recommendation, again, is obviously to make your annual required contributions that the, the actuary determines. Um, again, review your estimates, which you have been doing. Um, again, a lot of that increase in the net pension liability was driven by even that small percentage decrease in your discount rate. Um, in addition to the net pension liabilities, the town is also reporting an other post-employment benefit liability that does reflect retiree health care benefits for eligible employees. Uh, that is currently funded on a pay-as-you-go basis. Uh, the actuarial determined liability for those benefits total about $9.1 million. Um, that was a decrease of about $1.8 million from the prior year. Um, again, that decrease was really driven by an increase in the discount rate from about 2.16% to 3.54%. Per, uh, Why would that discount rate increase? So, you, so the town currently, you don't have a trust, so you're not funding the, the benefits through a trust. Um, as a result, the standard requires that you use a 20-year governmental bond index rate. Um, each year to measure those liabilities. Uh, so again, that increase reflects an, uh, an increase in the in that rate. So in theory, when we're here next year, we'll probably see another decrease. Uh, probably correct, as interest rates continue to rise, yes. Carl, how many employees does that represent? The retiree? Yeah. Uh, for the other post-employment benefits yes. or for, okay, so it's about 53. Well, it is 53. It's 50. Yeah. For other post-employment benefits, we have 71 retirees at the town. 
not all of them get post employment benefits. So again, a lot, a lot of financial information included in the financial statements. Um, certainly to the extent you go through the financial statements, if you have questions, we're happy to answer those at any point in time. Um, again, these just reflect some of the overall uh, highlights. Um, with that, I'm gonna go through our required communications. Um, and again, our communications are really geared towards when the auditor um, runs into issues during the course of the audit. Um, the audit went uh, very well from our perspective and, and therefore our communications uh, here are somewhat brief. Um, in terms of our responsibility under the US generally accepted auditing standards, although we do assist in the preparation of the financial statements, they are the responsibility of, of management. Uh, all of the information included in the financial statement did come from the town. Um, again, it's our responsibility to perform our audit procedures and express our opinion on those statements. Um, in terms of the plan scope and timing of the audit, again, no changes in the overall scope of work that was performed um, and uh, all audit or all reports were filed with the state by the statutory deadline. Uh, in terms of significant audit findings, um, what we usually communicate here are, are the implementation of any new accounting standards. Uh, the town was required to implement GASB statement number 87 on leases. Uh, the impact of that statement was determined to be immaterial to your government-wide financial statements. Um, however, future leases will need to be analyzed and accounted for in accordance with this statement. Um, so again, this would include uh, primarily copier leases um, will be subject to the um, accounting under the standard. Uh, in terms of the financial statements, there are some significant estimates and judgments included in the financial statements. Those do consist of estimated useful lives that are assigned to capital assets, as well as the discount rates that were utilized to determine the net pension and OPEP liabilities. Um, again, we did review those estimates and we de deem them to be uh, reasonable and consistent with what other municipalities are utilizing. Um, we had no uh, significant difficulties encountered in performing the audit. Uh, we had no uncorrected misstatements. We had no disagreements with management. Uh, we did obtain a management representation letter. Again, there was no unusual representations that we requested from management. Uh, I do give the example, if we were unable to substantiate a transaction and we were relying on a representation from Leanne, for example, uh, we would include that uh, in this communication. Um, and we're not aware of any consultations by management with any other independent accountants. Uh, if we were, we are required to uh, communicate that to you as the board. Uh, so with that, that concludes our audit presentations. Again, this is a summary of all of the reports that were issued in connection with the audit. Again, happy to answer any questions that any of the uh, board members may have. Yeah, I, don't. I had a question. Uh, there's a reference earlier, I'll find the page, but there's a reference to the Economic Development Fund with a fund balance of 74,000 or something like that. What, what is our economic, 79,000, what is our economic development? ARPA, ARPA monies, they segregated ARPA monies. So, and the balance, so this is as of June 30th, so we hadn't received the second tranche of money, is that? Probably, that is probably correct. Okay. Ready for another question? Yes, I'm sorry. On your page four of your uh, presentation, report on compliance and internal control of financial reporting. Uh, I'm not sure what 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 those two sentences mean. We do not report any material non-compliance of laws and regulations, and we do not report any significant differences on material weaknesses of our financial reporting. Could you put that in another set of words? So during the course of performing the audit, we will identify um, what we would consider to be material com uh, compliance requirements with laws and regulations. Uh, we will also review um, your internal controls over significant processes, uh, such as your cash disbursement process, your payroll process. 
Um, so in doing those procedures, which are really done for us to plan the audit in terms of determining what procedures we're going to perform, if we identified a deficiency that we considered to be significant enough to report to the board, which would also require a corrective action plan, we would be required to include it in this report. Right. So instead of saying we did not find any, we're saying we did not report any. So it's a matter of semantics. Uh, is that what it is? Correct. So we did not we did not identify any, and therefore we did not report any. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding that because some of the auditors and uh, that we've had over the years, uh, they have a particular phrase where they don't want to put themselves out on the line. They just use words like this. And that's why I bring out question that sometimes. Thank you. Understood. Mike um, and Sam, uh, as a lawyer, you're you're trained to ask quite, uh, never ask a question you don't know the answer to. Uh, but um, you, how many towns do you audit? Uh, we audit between twenty and twenty-five municipalities. Uh, and I'm not saying we're exceptional or anything, or we're not. I mean, we're unexceptional, but where do we? How are we doing? Like, you know, just generally, how are we doing from your perspective, from an audit perspective? Basically. So in terms of controls or financial condition? I mean, anything within your purview. Yeah. Um, Sam, I don't know if you want to mention in terms of how the audit goes. Um, the audit goes smoothly. We think you have enough personnel that you have good segregation of duties in the finance office. Your internal controls are um, designed and work effectively. Um, we don't have uh, big issues like we do in some other towns with the um, lack of knowledge in the accounting area or lack of people to oversee certain processes. So we are comfortable with your internal control structure at the town. Yeah. Right. So I think there's there's really two components to that. There's the internal control piece, um, which, again, the fact that we did not report any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses um, is, is favorable for the town. Um, and then in terms of the financial condition, um, again, we really haven't identified any issues uh, in terms of incurring deficits in some of your funds. Um, you know, you are fully funding your actuarially required contributions. Um, we've had no issues with your budgetary results in terms of over overexpending, uh, you know, department line items. Um, so again, from from a financial position, I think the town is is in a good position as well. All right, thanks. I have another question, Brad. Go ahead. Go ahead. On your page eight, you talk about government wide financials. Focus on the government wide financial statements around long term liabilities. So are you saying that Old Saybrook is part of the government that you're talking about? Yes, Old Saybrook is the government that we're talking about. Okay. And yeah. then on page, page nine, you mentioned something about leases, so the popular leases. Are those leases you're talking about liability leases or are they income producing leases? Liability leases. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, we'll move on. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Treasury report. Barbara. What? Hi there, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. I am down in South Carolina, so I'm not there. All right, so um, on your um, executive summary page, I apologize. Um, I was in my car when I was proofing it. So it should say January 2023 and not December 2022. So I want to apologize about that. And if you can all just correct that on your page there. And, um, and then we'll get started from there. So 
the executive summary for January 31st, 2023. So fiscal year to date, the town has received revenue of $47,358,305 or 97.9% of the total amount of our $48,377,698 budgeted. So when comparing our performance to last fiscal year, we are 3.2% of this time last year, 3.2% ahead <clears throat> of this time last year. So we're doing very well. Uh, we are almost completely at our budgeting point. At this time, we have exceeded our revenue budget for both the state, I'm sorry, at I have terrible notes that I've had to handwrite for myself because I'm away, I apologize. At this time, we have exceeded our budget for both the state and local revenues um, from, last, from last year. So now we're going to move on to our authorized investment section. As of the end of January, the town had 40.4 million in its bank accounts. So as you can see, we have added some money into some of our different accounts. So the investment committee had a meeting and we've added in our short-term cash management account, we've added $2 million extra. So we went from 8 million to 10 million. And so um, we did invest that into a short-term T-bill for 15 months which we will be earning 4.66 on, and we will be earning $120,000 interest for fiscal year 24 on that. So that will come up next year for um, a nice interest income investment. We added to our STIF account another $3 million. So we have 15 million in that. And the STIF rate is now at 4.59. And currently yesterday it was at 4.6. It's been having a little bit of movement. It's been going up and down just a little bit, but staying fairly steady. Um, let me look at my notes here. So we've, we've been moving some money around and um, everything is doing very well. And as always, uh, Webster gives us our stiff rate a month in arrears. So as you can see, the Webster is at 3.68 for January, and that will move up again in February. Okay. So any questions there? I have a question um, on the uh, revenue being up. Is that the 650000 tax payment we received? Does it push that up so high? Perfect. Perfect. I mean, that is definitely somewhat reflected in, in that. I mean, it's a significant payment for back taxes. Yeah. It, it is in there. So yes, yeah. it's reflected in there and it, it has boosted percent re, uh, received in 2023. There's no doubt. Right. You mentioned that the uh, short-term cash management was a 15 month investment are the, the other, the Stiff and the Webster Bank, are they, are they daily? No, as in receiving your interest? Yeah, daily, what the interest rate changes. Yes, the Stiff account, the, the, the rate does change daily. Right. Yes, okay. not that we're playing with it on a daily rate but we can check the rate on a daily basis and if we need the money, we can move the money out Leanne needs to take money out to pay bills or anything like that, we can move it on a day's notice. Yes, but I can go in and look at the, you can go to ct.gov backslash stiff and you can look at the rate, you can see charts, you can see how it moves and you can watch it every day. So we can, we can, we can watch the stiff rate every day. So then on um, the stiff rate is, tell, so every day the stiff rate changes. Then they make an average monthly rate, right? Five nine or whatever it is. I mean, and then Webster takes takes that rate, and that's what they pay us every single day. So we'll get a same rate for one month at Webster based on what the average average is. Right. 
I mean, there's some normal residual of interest rates. It's like, why not take advantage of it while we can? Absolutely. So, all right. So that's that for the authorized investment section. Um, so then we're going to move to the pension plan. So as the at, at the end of January, we received our report, our report as normal from Morgan Stanley. So the town pension plan is up 8.28% fiscal year to date versus its benchmark of 7.23%. Over the three-year horizon, the town plan has returned 5.23% versus its benchmark of 4.61%. And then the fire department pension plan is up 7.98% fiscal year to date and has returned 5.06% over the three-year horizon versus its benchmark of 4.61%. So it the pension had a good month. So overall, the treasurer's responsibility is to oversee all the monies belonging to the town. And as of January 31, we had a total cash balances of 40.4 million total pension balances of 26 million for total assets under ma management of 66.4 million. So then we'll move to page two of the treasurer's report to show the revenues broken out in a little more detail. So we had a big month for tax revenues in January. Tax revenues were 13,601,000 472 for the month, bringing the fiscal year to date total to 45,728,601 or 97.6% collected. It looks like in our state revenue, we did receive all of our town aid road money and another portion of our ECS allotment. And then in terms of local revenue, the town collected $80,457 in local revenues. So overall for the month of January, the town collected $13,839,074 in local revenue of our fiscal year 20, or 97, I'm sorry, 97.9% of our fiscal year 23 budget, with majority of that money coming from property tax collection. Does everybody have any questions? No. That's all I have. Uh, on the first line item under local revenue, yeah, vendor licenses. So, I mean, what is that? It's a very small number. Yeah, it's, uh, like when folks solicited it uh, with a balloon truck at the first night parade, or uh, people co go door to door with uh, solar licenses that's peddling, and they have to actually pay for the privilege of being able to go door to door after they do a, after we do a police check, right. make sure they're yeah, yeah. Okay. able to do it. So, it's just solicit. It's, People go door to door soliciting primarily. I use solar as the, as the example because it seems like that's the most, you know, that's most of it. Uh, however, if you're a nonprofit, you don't have to do that. You still have to get clearance, but you don't have to pay a peddler's fee. That's the most Okay. Thank you. Finance director report. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. This is probably going to be the quickest report I ever gave because there's nothing that's changed in the month before except for the fact that we paid our bills. So, um, fiscal year to date, we have spent um, $28,914 of our $48.4 million, or 59.8%. We're very close to where we were last year. Um, we did not have any budget appropriations, transfers, or um, transactions in the capital non-recurring account. 
Um, there was not a lot of activity in terms of cash flow for any of our non major funds. Um, all of the action, of course, was in our collection of taxes. So we collected about $15 million worth of taxes and um, we uh, paid about 3.2 million. So that that um, offsets the, the cash flow. Um, so we did have a big month as Barbara uh, suggested um, that we uh, took in a lot of tax money. Um, starting next month, I'll probably start to project what our, our revenue surplus is going to be. Um, I'm thinking that maybe by March, we might finish the budget, but I'll be doing a little bit more. That's back of the envelope. I'll be doing a little bit more um, serious analysis. And um, everything else, um, in terms of our capital account, we didn't have any use. Uh, there was no, no material movements in all of our um, municipal reserve funds or all of our other reserve funds. We did not have any um, movement there. So that remains about the same, very healthy. We have three point. Two million dollars um, in all of our um, funds that we have set aside, um, and um, capital expenditures. Almost we have that. We almost are fully ex expended. Uh, we spent five hundred forty-two of our six hundred sixty-five thousand. And then in terms of the individual line items on the budget, um, there really isn't anything that that stands out at this point. Every, everything is going well. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more discussion on the budget and some other things, but I'm gonna pause here and see if anyone has any questions on the um, expenditure side. <clears throat> this week covering the uh, month of January, shouldn't the twelve five that was appropriated for the town meeting on January twenty fourth in the ARPA funds, shouldn't that be represented here? So it it. It depends on when we actually move the money, and we haven't moved it yet. So, so it hasn't been paid out. It, it hasn't been paid out. So, and there's a couple other things in the ARPA fund that we haven't moved either. Um, we haven't moved the uh, uh, those things that you're doing on Main Street. Um, those I have uh, crosswalks. Uh, cross, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> those, those things. Those things. Yes. Yeah. Um, we haven't moved those yet, and some other things, and it's just a matter of timing for us. Um, setting up the accounts. So, so like for instance, that uh, person was getting a twelve five. If she doesn't comply with what needs to be done, right, she won't get the funds, correct? Correct. So we have to get her W nine, mm -hmm. and we have to get the contract signed. Then Jennifer will bring the um, all once once Jennifer Donahue is is happy with the way everything is. Then she brings the check request. And this so there's two ways that ARPA funds are are moved. One is if we uh, cut a check, and that happens through our accounts payable department. And the other way is um, when we just transfer funds. And you see that sometimes in the cash flow, and you'll see it come out of you know um, our budget and go into maybe a capital project or something like that. Like when we do the cross, when we do the crosswalks, we haven't spent that money yet. So I, I'm just leaving it in ARPA funds um, until the time being. But we have all the paperwork in place for that. We're comfortable with that. Um, and we can move those those monies at any point in time. So but that's your off. checks and balances for the uh, if we got out of you know, we have to fund it through government to make sure because otherwise they could rescind the funds, correct? If it was improperly dispensed. Correct, yes. Dispersed. In, in, in theory, they're under the treasury regs, there's a way for them to recoup the money. Correct. Yes. So in April, um, they have a portal. Um, that we report to for, for all of these funds, and we'll do that. And then, um, and then sometimes we have to upload um, invoices and you know a lot of backup data, especially if it's something that was income. So there's and that's the thing that Mahoney Stable also checks on for us. Didn't when we discussed that last ARPA application for the home salon for twelve five, didn't we? I thought I thought you said that the town was paying. All of the contractors and not paying the individual for that. That was I thought said that. We did. Is that correct? So, said so is that not happening now? Um, I believe it is probably going. We're not going to give her a check for twelve thousand five hundred. Right. I thought when we when we talked about it that night, that they were going to take invoices and pay. Them. Yes. So direct Jennifer to Jennifer, Jennifer will get okay. invoices, send them up, and then we'll cut the checks. But to the contractor, exactly. not to yeah. the individual. That's correct. Okay. Yes, that's how they're doing it when funds aren't for that type mm -hmm. of situation. 
So there's a difference between loss of revenue from COVID and actually starting a new business. Correct. Right. If somebody, if we gave them a grant for loss of revenue, we just cut the check to the chamber or whatever. American Legion. But I have another question, Brad. Sure, go ahead. Okay. You're still on the spot. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> go ahead. When does the Ethics uh, Commission expend their budget of $950? They would expend it on either a clerk or if they needed to spend any money. They would do it throughout the year as they needed to. I mean, like any other board of commission. Right. Let's go find the spend any. Yeah, that's not surprising. I don't they don't meet all that much. Right. Okay. And um so the frequency uh, of meeting cuts down they may not spend any of it. Cuts down on the number of people they need or personal It may be a zero appropriation for the year. Yep. Okay. Um I mean it could be, you know. Uh so, so I just saw that. We've know. had we've had expenditures there. Yeah. 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 But there's not very much. Thank you. Uh, further discussion about the year ending 24 budget? Yes, I wanted to do a few things. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to. Uh, and I did bring your questions from last week to the end, so I think she'll go over. So I'm going to um, pull this presentation up, and I promise you, I know I've all did this already, and I'm not going to read through it. I'm just going to do. Uh, well, I'm going to go. I'm going to go through a few slides that I think that you have presented. I'm going to go quickly. So if you all want me to stop on a particular slide, because I know you've already seen this, please, please just tell me to stop. Um, but I just want to make a couple of um, um, executive level comments. I'm sure that you saw that the numbers where the budgets are up. And, and, and I'm not sure if Carl did, um, did you discuss the themes? I'm going to discuss the themes. So well, I think, I'll, I'll, yes. I'll start off by just simply saying that the numbers that were in this presentation were slightly different than the numbers that was in the handout that you gave us, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. And so I, but I assume this being more up to date, these, these are the right numbers. These are the right numbers. And that is not unusual because, you know, as we get our numbers in and we find through everything, but um, this is the cutoff for what we call the department budget. And, um, you know, so I save this, these are the numbers that I saved. And from this point is when uh, the select team are now making their changes. So um, then you're going to get, you're going to get the selectman budget, which will be bound and copied and those numbers will be presented at the annual budget hearing. So um, um, just a quick, for instance, on that. So February 14th, the board of selectmen will be meeting. And that's a meeting that will vote on the budget that we're going to recommend. But just for instance, to what you just said, in the interim between one of our, I, I don't know if it came between last Tuesday, I think it might have between last Tuesday and this Tuesday, Connecticut Water, which normally is a 2% to 2.5%, said to us, eh, you better budget 10%. Whoa. Yeah. So we put, that is the new number, 60,000 increase. Year over year on a six hundred thousand dollar bill, which is confident. So that just came in, and the the problem with not budgeting, and I know this because it happened to me when I first came into office. Um, I got stuck with two years of water bills and played had to play catch up, um, and if you don't stay on top of it. That bill just keeps going up and up and up. So if you don't budget the right amount, yeah. you know, you'll find yourself 70,000 behind if you just say, well, I, I want to push it. So we just said, put in the 10%. If it's too much, we have a little bit of leeway for next year. But that's what they told us to put in. Well, they, they control much sure, I think. It's a utility, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, okay. You haven't heard any anybody talking about any pushback yet. The only time there was pushback on Connecticut Water was when there was a merger with uh, San Jose Water Company, um, and that was the last you heard anything about them. I, look, <clears throat> provide a service. We do tax them on what their infrastructure in town, so they pay taxes. It's not like they don't. Uh, and they're doing a heck of a lot of work. They are updating pipes 
underground pipes all over town. So anyway, that was in I just introduced Thank okay. you. It's okay. So when I look at the whole budget, the whole global budget, there's three things that I see that are affecting this bottom line that have to do with the general, at least the general government piece. Um, and that is the great resignation and retirement. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how that affects our departments and the costs going up in the individual um, departments as well as our um, ADC. And it also um, is going to be an increase in our ret retirees' retirement expense. So our active and our uh, retirement expense have been affected by the great retirement and resignation. Um, inflation, uh, you can you'll see, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to name off some of the, the top um, um, increases in expenses in this budget, but a lot of goods and services have been increased due to inflation and costs. Uh, uh, cost. But we also had a cost containment um, that was pretty major in this budget. The two custodian positions were eliminated. So those three variables, you're going to see a theme throughout all of all of these charts. Um, and just and, and just looking at these uh, uh, line items for the general government, you can see across the board there, you know, there's nothing that's a huge outlier, especially given the level of inflation, um, to have the total general government budget up 2.79%. That operational expense is up 42 I'll get into that in a little bit, but you're going to see it's the paving budget and a lot of the increases in contractual arrangements. Um, in terms of salaries, uh, we're up to 0.42%. I actually don't think that's terrible. Um, we have one promotion in here. We had a new salary schedule at the library where their salaries are right on the minimum wage. So they got pretty big bumps. We had the minimum wage increase. And we had all of those upward pressures in salaries. And that has been offset to some extent to the fact that um, with the Great Recession, uh, retirement and, and the Great Retirement and Resignation, we're bringing staff in at step one. So lower levels are kind of offsetting that. So 2.42%, um, um, I think, is, is not is, is a good, good place to be. Um, in terms of benefit expenses, in your fiscal year 23 to the graph on the right, that's when we added our um, fully funded actuarial and determined calculation. You just heard our auditors say congratulate us on, on that strategy. So that's that's very good. We're up 3% over last year. And again, um, uh, it assumes that um, health insurance is going to go up 10%. Uh, the cost, we don't have that locked in just yet. That's not going to happen until actually after the budget's approved in April sometime. And also, this is affected by employee uh, choice. But I think, you know, if we kind of look at the, the uh, big picture, we're up um, over that five-year period, 219000 and we actually increased our ADC um, by about 200000 So we would have been flat if we hadn't implemented that. But, um, you know, I think that we're doing pretty well in terms of, uh, of benefits, being up 3% year over year. And um, I'm starting to see in this slide, um, and just to show you how well uh, the negotiations have been, you can see all the years kind of are really um, at a, a good place now in terms of negotiations, um, and um, and it's starting to creep back up with the increased expenses, but still well below what the uh, state Connecticut is doing. Um, actuarial determined calculation. So graph on the left shows the first two years, um, which are fiscal year 19 and 20, shows our former strategy where we would put aside 8% of payroll, both the town and the Board of Ed would do that. Then in the next two fiscal years, 21-22, we began to supplement um, our budget at the end of the year with surplus so that we could make our full ABC contribution. And then beginning last year, um, we fully funded the ABC um, for both the town and the Board of Education. Um, however, there's we also have two retirement plans. Uh, we have a defined benefit, and all employees since 2017 are in a defined contribution, with the exception of the police. So you can see in the red bar that um, our expense is, is starting to mount, um, and those expenses in the red are going to be housed in each individual department's uh, uh, expense line because it is a, a, an expense that can be specifically um, allocated to that department, whereas the ABC cannot. 
Um, so when we when we go through these budgets and when we have new employees coming on, it might look like their budget's going up a lot more than other people's budgets or other departments' budgets, but it's some of it is uh, because of this uh, so phenomenon. Um, you know, John, we remember this discussion last year. I, and I don't mean to bring it up because we, I think we punched out last year and I understood where you were coming from. But with the defined benefit plan, it's more of they look at and plan, you can certainly explain this better than I probably, but uh, they kind of look at the, the pool of retirees and say, based on life expectancies and everything, this is what you should be doing for this pool. Whereas with a defined contribution plan, a 401k plan, let's just call it that, uh, to simplify it, we can say Eric is making $70,000 and our expense for him is exactly, we know what it is. And when he retires, he can take that and do whatever he wants. It's not a monthly payment that you get. So that's why with the DC, everybody who's in the DC and all the new employees in town hall, library, uh, help youth and family services, anybody, they're in the DC, we can tie their retirement expense to the person. Whereas on the DB, and you know, I we went through that last yeah. year. And I know there was frustration. I, I recognize that, appreciate it. I'm not um, frustrated anymore. No, but <laughs> no, it was a it was a John, it was a switch. Yeah. It was a good conversation. It, this is, listen, I mean, it's a higher level stuff. It's actuarial stuff, yeah. is what it is. It's, and it's anyway. Um, so um, that's, that's what we'll see. We'll see that in the individual well, department that going forward. Like earlier. In yeah. terms of operational trends, this is one of the areas that we've seen, um, you know, a larger than normal increase. And we're up, um, you know, um, uh, 223,000 over last year, up 4.2%. And I just want to just read to you what the like four or five biggest operational expenses are. You've probably seen them all in everyone's individual budget, but it's kind of nice to just hear them all in one spot. Um, mm -hmm. Debt service is up 38,000. The transfer um, for youth and family services, um, the amount that the general government sets aside to be off budget is plus 34,000. Last year we used 15,000 from the income fund, and you know, so this year we get the full the full amount. Um, insurance is up 29,000. That's for that fiber insurance, but the annual increase. The uh, highway and streets, the paving budget is up 25,000. In information technology, we saw Larry in here. He's he's up thirty two thousand, which is offset somewhat by by park and rec, um, but still um, we need those extra dollars to properly implement the um, to um, communications. Fire marshal is up. Oh, the fire department I mean, is up twenty thousand for cleaning services. That's offset by the loss of the custodian, which is in the salary line. And um, the water hydrant um, at this point was only up 17,000, but it's going to be up more. It's probably discussed. Fire marshal requested extra deputies up 17,000. And the board of uh, uh, the, oh, the fire department also had vehicle repairs up 10,000. So they're up 30,000 in operational expenses offset by um, the loss of half of a custodian. The Board of Finance is up 9,200 and due to the um, audit. Everything else below that is like $5,000 or less, but those are the major um, large ticket items that um, you've all heard about in, in the various um, department budgets, but I just wanted to kind of pull them together all in one spot, talk about the increase in the operational trends. So now um, I'm going to go through the budgets. Um, uh, if you're interested in uh, guessing accounting, we had a question. So accounting budgets are up um, four and a half thousand in technical services. Again, our finance system is going up. We'll also um, have a budget system in there, a budget uh, presentation system that I'm going to show you when we're done. And um, next year, we are slated to do an upgrade of the e-finance system. We'll come back to the board for a capital non-recurring um, request to pay for that upgrade. But we will need uh, training on how to do all utilize the new system. So we um, 
uh, training budget was increased um, accordingly um, in the accounting area. So we in the 4.5 thousand uh, is for uh, outside services. Yes, that increased cost in our software system. Is that uh, one year, two year, three year? Every year. Every um, year. We have a polar rider in the contract. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I can certainly look that up. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, assessor office, same thing again. Inflation for cost of goods and services, UDF and vision are used in those uh, that department. And both of those expenses, uh, we have letters of how much it's going to be increase over last year. Stop me if I go too fast. You know about the board of finance increase in the audit, um, and that's the main driver of increase there. Uh, building department is down, uh, but that's because of a choice in an employee benefit. He went from only for a person to a single, reduce the cost in building department. The uh, audit, the yeah. increased number, that's for next year's audit? Next year, fiscal 24. So this year they did it for the lower number? Yes, they did. Okay. Um, fire department, we talked about this, up 30,000 is being built, vehicle repair down 36,000 in custodian. Yeah. Speaking of yes. custodian, I yeah. thought that was part of that cleaning service. I mean, we're saving, I think, so 130000 Custodian is the union position. We have two union positions um, that were negotiated. Right. And so the 36000 is that, that loss of salary for that one person. And what, what's your question on the cleaning service? If I understood what we were told last week, there were two full-time jobs that were replaced by a cleaning service. Yes, sir. And we were saving so, 30000 36,000 was, was half of Wayne Wysocki's salary for the fire department. Okay. So that came out of the budget. All right. 20,000 is what they're now paying to have the fire department cleaned by a, a contractor. Okay. The other half of his salary was in the library. And then, and then we had, and then we had one full time person in town hall, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So. I liked 130,000. Yes. Yeah. This is just a piece of it. Just a piece of it here. This is the quarter of it. Quarter of it, yes. And Carl, I saw the response back about the ten thousand dollars on that on two vehicles. Fifty nine thousand dollars doesn't handle what they need. They gotta add a million ten to it. I just I just got you the response. <laughs> okay. Fire marshal requested um, to hire uh, increase 17.7 to hire part time fire marshals. Um, he also requested a new vehicle, but um, you know because of the time it takes to get these vehicles, he requested three thousand dollars for repair on the existing vehicle and an increase for fuel in general. So, Rick, you said something last week about a new vehicle. I mean, and I this is ultimately going to be. In the capital now recurring budget, I'm going to let the board of finance make the call on that. But uh, what did you say? You can get a new vehicle. I made a call to the to the GSA contractor yeah. that offers those vehicles up. The one that has them and available, they're actually he didn't know. If you remember at the meeting, he didn't know what it was going to cost, right. and he brought a number of sixty five thousand. Yeah. I believe you you can buy a new one right now for forty one. Hard to believe. Did mm. that 65 then add the various different pieces? The radios and, and so yeah, forth. That, a lot of that should be able to be transferred over. If, well, it is, but you still got to spend the money to transfer it over. But it's that. not going to be that much of a difference is what I'm getting at. There's really? a significant savings by Right. Yeah. Can I ask a question on this? How many uh, Suburbans or what do you call it, SUVs does the fire department have? I see them there for the inspectors, I guess. Yeah. Like two two vehicles. So the fire department. From the yeah. fire department. And we have one now for the fire marshal. Well, the fire marshal's always had a car. I know, yeah. I know, but the question I would have is there any way we can do the same process in for the fire apparatus oh. as we do in the police department? Now I know that there'd be an overlapping time frame here. And to the expense of, I'm sure that the cars in the fire department aren't up now. 
but maybe we can to 65,000 miles, maybe there's a few more years left on that card, so we can combine them and not have the discussion every couple of years. So it would even have to be every four or five years. That, 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 that card should be good for 10 years. Yeah. Well, that's what the fire department's yeah, always gone by is a 10 year. Yeah. I mean, the car is what, five years old now, and it's got 65,000 miles. These cars are made to go 200,000 miles. So in five years, I'll have 130,000 if he's going at the rate he's going now. Uh, to me, it's, right. don't forget, it came from a used police cruiser. But that would be true of the police cars, too. No, it's not, because it's police cars, first of all, have about probably six different drivers. They're used 24-7. And they're used for high speed. Um, well, the idle is over the idle. Every, yeah. every hour of idle is equal to 32 miles. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't apply to this vehicle at all. I mean, I'm, I'm adamant that there's no need for this new vehicle. Okay. 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 And there's money in for repairs. And I want to know what the repairs are for three grand in mean, a 65,000 mile car. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I mean, usually at 30,000, you need front brakes. At 60,000, you need front and back brakes with rotors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And the invoices yeah. come in until the end, right? They do. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. after the fact, I, I don't know what the answer is for the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is that 3,000 with done yet? This is for next yeah. year's budget. So um, I'm sure he's done the repairs. I know he did. I'm going to have to look up the, the assumption for that. I don't know what else to talk about. So that's in the And then the other thing is, there is no weight now for vehicles. Look at the car lines. Mm -hmm. They're loaded. There's oh, don't say old. that. Oh, don't say that. I'm <laughs> going through that with 10 vehicles right. myself. Yeah. From In Massachusetts, they're, they're readily available right. from the dealer down there. Is the, um, the, can you go back to the fire marketing yeah. quick? The, the part time fire marshals yeah. increase of $17,000. Mm -hmm. Are those going to be per diem positions? They're hourly. But, they, but but this is not final budget, so um, I don't. But yeah. it's on here. It is on here. But what I guess my question is how? What is the structure going to be? Our current fire marshal, who is I guess essentially available twenty four hours a day, but then if he needs to go away for a week, how are we paying a part time fire marshal during that time? We so paying. We okay. have we have um, in the town hall budget. So we have same situation with the building official, fire marshal. Um, that's really the only intricate positions. And so instead of having all these individual departments having money set aside, we put it in town hall. So when they go on vacation and they hire uh, somebody to come in, they can utilize that money. So we have $10,000 set aside. And, you know, and so it's there. It's already there. It's already there. That's so, um, so I'm with this particular re request, I've looked at prior years and so when you look at prior years, it doesn't look like, you know, it's been like 2,500, 3,500. So I'm looking at prior years and the town hall table is busy right now, but is next year going to be five times busier than this year? You know, so I'm not so positive about that request personally. Um, I guess what I don't understand was how do you how are you paying this person? We pay him hourly. There's hourly. Hourly. hourly to sit home for a week if our fire marshal. No, 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 no. It's only on, uh, when they're called. They're on a call. No, 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. Or so, investigations. So, right. Okay. Thank you. So, Brad. Yes. I want to tell Eric that uh, the fire marshal just doesn't respond to fires. Yeah. Right. No, no, I don't. We do planning. Right. Yeah. And he does fire pit permits. permits and stuff, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Restaurants. They, fire marshals do the liquor permit renewals. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my question because. Think about that in town. That's I didn't realize that the new that was I know there's a there's an admin side of that job and I didn't right. realize that the on call or a part time person is going to come in and do that so that's good yeah. and in the past we have actually appointed they are appointed we have about three appointed right now so, so that's it's not that you don't have them you have them yeah it's just you got to have a mechanism to pay them when you need them so every new construction like mm -hmm. uh, the new building on uh, Route One and Lynn Street uh, yeah. plans come in the fire marshal has to review those yeah. And that takes a lot of administrative time, and I think 
many times uh, Mr. Layton comes in and helps her eat sometimes with that stuff. And uh, so we forget sometimes we put it out and it's fine with the fire all the time. But the assistant fire marshal will go out and inspect the restaurant permits and, and no like people that. do that. Yeah. Not the assistant. But the inspectors. The fire marshal does that. Okay. I, I'm sorry, did I not? Um, well, I'm, I'm, yeah, but in the past, it's always been some of the part timers that helped them out to get those numbers up where they need to be. Not a ton, I don't think. Usually it's vacation coverage. Okay. That's it. All right. How close is he with his required inspections? How far off is he? So he's off. So required inspections is kind of an interesting, uh, I don't want to get completely off topic, but so uh, in other towns, I don't want to use a hypothetical because it, it, it could be tragic. It's a tragic hypothetical, but you could have a build. There was a building, up, I want to say in Waterbury, that hadn't been inspected in five years and people were living in there. And uh, obviously a fire marshal should have inspected it, but the fire marshal said, I was not able to inspect it. And there is sovereign immunity for that. That is not an automatic liability to the town. Should it be done? Sure. Is every town up on every inspection? No. Does that subject the town to liability? It does not, uh, for the most part. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. And he doesn't, I'm not but, looking for him so to go to the third floor apartment, illegal apartments or anything like that. I am. I, I know where you're coming from with that. I'm, I'm just, I'm talking about the bars, the restaurants, the the uh, elderly housings and the, the elevator the hair salons. And elevators. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, That's it, safe, actually. I think, I, I think we're in great shape, actually. I mean, that's my understanding. So. All right, Dan. Okay. Um, land use did not have any changes. Register our voter, um, you know, no changes in this version. We made some, I made some additional changes from the, what I said to you last week. So we have a proposal. Does it change really anything? We just rearranged more numbers and it's a $2,300 boost to this budget and everything that I said last week happens. Okay. Blackman Department, no um, changes except for salaries. Tax collector. Um, this budget had um, has all new employees, the tax collector and the assistant. So that's up 10.5, mainly due to the defined contribution. Nothing else there. Captain Hepburn Flat, town clerk, uh, similar to the tax collector, two new employees. That's the only thing. DC plan was the major uh, contributor to the increase in this budget. Town hall. I, I think there were some questions here on town hall. Um, so uh, this is the one where we had one full employee, a uh, full custodian leave. So the salaries were down 33.5. Um, the overtime, that $10,000 in the overtime is actually that $10,000 I was just talking about. Um, I, it's not really overtime, so I moved it into the regular employee account. So that's, um, that's just a change in where we house things. But everything that is associated with an employee has decreased health insurance, FICA, all that other, all those other things. Then, um, since, you know, so there was a significant decrease because of the loss of that one full time employee. Then I looked down at some of the other items that we have on a regular basis and noticed that building maintenance, we've been doing a lot of work. We don't, well, we don't do a lot of work. We do a little bit of work every single year because this building is old and it needs up to be upkeep. Kept. Um, so, um, you know, I just right size that. It was 35,000 last year, 40,000. I put it up to 40,000. It was almost 50,000 the year before. Same thing with supplies. There's increased expenses, but also, you know, just wanted to right size that up to 20,000. The year before, it was 29,000 actual. And electricity uh, has increased in price. So I, I increased that one. Um, Did you increase that enough? Um, I think so. Probably. Yeah. You didn't get that 100% increase like the rest of us did? We did. Yeah, but it's going to drop in the summer. Say again? It's going to drop in the summer because they do these six month contracts. How do you know it's going to drop though? Well, yeah, the town. No, we we are in, entering into Christmas. contracts. So it yeah. went up, and Leanne came to me one day and said, Is this bill right? And I'm like, It is for now, but it's going to go back down because 
we negotiated a contract that I think starts in March. I hope it's not April and it goes for seven months. In that seven months, I think I said this last week, we anticipate negotiating hopefully a more favorable contract. That time period, you get weird time periods that they bid, they bid them out. Could be 12 months, could be 13, it could be 17 months. It could be, if it's very favorable, we'll do a three year commitment. Um, so we'll see, I'll keep you updated on that. I had a question on uh, on this building and the Cape. Okay. Um, Cape takes a lot of money to maintain, such as in gutters, et cetera, et cetera. And this building with gutters and things. Are we on a, like a two, three, four, five year plan for either of the buildings? Or? Not for gutters. Um, we don't have a lot of trouble with our gutters because we don't have a lot of trees right over the building. And over there, we put screens on the new gutters. Um, so that has worked very well. But one project that you guys might see uh, come down the pike is when they get a, when we uh, get a tremendous rain event, the drain on the Cape patio goes out to the street, it crosses the street over to like the river mark, goes down the street to the corner, and then crosses back over and goes out to marsh. That's apparently what it does. So we hook into the state system. What we are going to do is stop that. And we're going to, we've done a roof analysis on rain events, and we are going to cut it off at the sidewalk. We're going to reroute it going south underneath the sidewalk that goes from the entrance of town hall to the road. And we're going to put uh, galleries on the town green. And uh, the water is going to go there as opposed to into the state system. Because what we think is happening is it's backing up and it's coming back. And the Cape had a flooding event several years ago before they put in the museum. They had an event that was about to happen about a year ago. They got there in time and they were able to put in these bags, sandbags that you can buy that absorb the water, and it was not an emergency. But if you look over there right now, you'll see a cone and, you know, in when we expect a big rain event, we're ready right now until we do this work, which we hope to do this spring. So that's more than you needed to know. That pipe, that, that pipe that goes back, have you ever followed it and know where it comes out? Because the town crew used to have to dig that out every so many years. It's behind the ambulance barn. It's behind what? The ambulance barn. Yeah. Okay. And they used to have to go down there with the back and dig it out every so many years. I don't yeah. know if that's been done. So. Well, I don't remember that at all. Yeah. Um, Roddy used to do it all the time. Okay. I'll make a note of that. But um and Mike, in other words, you might have created yourself a dam, and that's why it's slower to go out that way for you. I'd save you a little bit of that. I'll bring it up to Billy. Treasurer, no change. WPCA, no change. That's the salaries. And then just a couple um, things I wanted to mention here. So um, in these budget line items, I already mentioned insurance was up 29000 That's one of the main contributors to our increase in our operation budget. Um, down a little ways is street lighting. That budget is flat, but what we're starting to do now is you know, kind of change the balance between maintenance and electricity because now we're repairing a lot of the uh, lines. So we kept it flat, but we just um, um, <coughs> in that budget a little bit. Um, and then way at the bottom is the water hydrant. Um, at for this budget version, it was up seventeen thousand, and and the next budget version is going to go fifty thousand more. So those are those line items. Everything else was flat. Um, the various commissions were all flat. Nothing exciting going on there. Um, political subdivisions. Um, the only difference was, did you go over that Clean Vessel Act? Yes. Okay, good. Um, and then what was that? Excuse me? The Clean Vessel Act, the Pumbo Boat? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, That's definitely. multiple towns that participated in that. Mm -hmm. right? yes. There were probably seven yeah. Yeah. doing it. So that's the major difference there. We're still. Um, we're still getting um, things in on this, so that might change a little bit, but between the next now and the next budget. Okay, so retiree health. Um, uh, there's some questions on this one, I believe. So um, the town has 71 retirees 
police department and town employees. 53 of those employees are eligible for other post-employment benefits. Other post-employment benefits can be life insurance or, and or health insurance. If they're over 65 years old, they get it in Medicare Advantage plan. If they're under 65, they get the same plan that we all get. Um, so it's more expensive when they're under 65 for the town. So um, of the 53 eligible employees, uh, 37 are on um, health plans, um, 29 are on advantage plans, eight are under 65 years old, and um, I think there's uh, 16, 15 or 16 people that all they get is insurance. So, you know, we stopped um, a long time ago, like what is it, 2004, Four. something like that, that people cannot get health insurance when they retire. So most people do get life insurance. So when we had everyone retiring um, over the past year, and retirees went from like 64 to 71 in general, we had you know a lot of folks come on to, onto the rolls. Um, life insurance went up because everyone get, gets that, so it's up by four four thousand dollars or ten percent. The retirees over 65 they fell due to attrition. They it like that. Um, retirees um, under well, 60. <laughs> actuaries call it mortality gain. <laughs> Oh, no thanks. <laughs> Truly, that's what they say. That's what they say. Um, retirees under 65, um, there's eight, and this year it rose by five, five individuals. So that had the um, largest increase of 37,000 um, or 82 percent as the five new retirees were added to the rolls. Um, so 286,000, it's up. 35,000 um, or 14 percent versus last fiscal year. So I don't know what the question was, but um, hopefully that answered it. So this is our one of our other post employment benefits yeah. that we do pay as you go, uh, right? And that's what the that I think was what the actuary said, uh, actually, um, auditor said. Is potentially a nine million dollar long term liability. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know how many how, the state of Connecticut funds. I think zero point five of their long term liability. I mean, it's an impossible amount to fund. We 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 pay as you go. It's a manageable number. It's two hundred eighty six thousand. Some years it's actually been flatter down. It's up a little bit this year. Uh, we did have resignations and retirements. Uh, but from my where I sit, I believe it's a manageable number. I think we're handling this appropriately, as opposed to creating a trust where we would be like having a pension, where, which we'd have to fund every year. Our actuaries would give us the number. Right. It's a moving target all the time. And this used to be over three hundred thousand, like you know, several years ago. So it's oh, right? it's on its way down. Yeah. And plus we. Um, for a few years there, we sub supplemented it with some funds from the uh, post employment benefit. So this is all on its own, 100%. Um, it just happened to go up this year. So, um, and there was a good reason for it, but it's still only 186,000. Very reasonable. Um, debt, outstanding debt is going down. Um, and you know, that's we've talked about that. Um, um, before, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. We can come back to that. So finally, um, the last thing I'm going to show you is I'm, I'm going to um, uh, um, give you a demonstration of our budget uh, module that we have online. And you can see by some of the things that we've done, we've had a lot of, um, over the years, we've been really kind of shoring up our budget process. You know, we have these um, budget workshops that we started a few years ago. We reviewed all of the board finance policies, you know, including targeting um, our fund balance to the 15%. The auditors mentioned how, how great we are there. We just changed our investment policy, and um, now we can, we're can earning lots of, lots of money. There's other things that we've done. Um, and so every year we kind of like to shore up our budget program as best we can. Um, there is a GFOA uh, government gen, government financial officers association uh, that has a preferred way to budget. And so um, the budget book that you had last year was um, was fashioned 
in that manner. Let me just give you one second because I cannot talk and speak at the same time. Let me see and share. So I just want to show you what we're going to be doing for the public. Um, we have the budget is going to be in this um, budget book. It's going to be online and it's going to be very easy to hopefully easy to navigate. This is not online and these, these numbers are not done yet. Um, I'm just going to take five minutes to show you what's in here and a couple of the things, um, but want you all to know what's going to be coming up. You're going to get a printed copy of this book, um, but in the um, introduction um, of this budget book, we, we have um, things like um, demographics, history of the town, all kinds of information that um, hasn't um, been uh, uh, discussed during the budget process before, so you'll get to see all of this. Um, in terms of the fund summaries, we're going to have an overview of the general fund, and um, I just want to show you some of the things that you'll be able to see. So what's nice about this is it shows the history. We haven't really shown the history before, and you can see the green is um, actual, then it says what the budget was, how much came, how much uh, funds were coming in. Uh, we'll take a look at our revenues that, that are um, discussed by source. Hold on one second. Yeah. And I'm going to show you so you can see all of the revenues. We also have a history of the revenues. We really haven't um, shown a history of the revenues. So again, more transparent about what we did receive versus what we budgeted in terms of revenues, but we focus mainly on the expenditure side. Um, in terms of the departments, um, we can uh, take a look at the total general government. So this is less the Board of uh, Education. And if you see, there's our $18,000. I don't really like the way it's dark green and light green because I can't see the difference hardly, but that's, I don't have any control over that. But you can um, go online and click on anything and see what the actual was, what the budget was, and the five-year history of, of where we've been graphically. Um, Take a look at our expenditures um, by type, you know, public safety, general government, the ABC. We take a look at that. And also, um, I like this graph here over time. You can see like how much we've spent on public safety, general government, culture, rec, and how much we've grown in the budget and where the um, different amounts have been year over year over year. Um, that information is new. Um, or it hasn't been presented before. And then we can look at it by type, salaries. I think we typically can talk about this, how much we spend on each of the various um, areas. And then um, again, by type, by salaries, operations, benefits, we can kind of slice and dice a couple ways by the type of expense, by the department. Um, and then the other thing I want to show is if we go into departments, um, they are going to be broken down just like our our, our books are um, um, uh, by our audit books that we, we just received. And uh, hold on a second. Um, <coughs> so we can look at um, the entire general government budget here, and it's going to show you all of those graphs that I just went through. Or you can go into um, you can look in here and you can go to any department that you want to see um, accounting and you're just going to see uh, the pictures of all of our folks that we have here, their um, accomplishments, their budgets, and then you see something like this, like, oh, what happened here? Well, that was the year that we transferred a 50-50 employee. We said, let's put that person right there in, in accounting and kind of see everything that's happened uh, year over year. Um, and then uh, similarly, the same thing that we just saw in the general budget, the whole global picture is repeated for each department. So um, folks can go through and look at whatever department they want to. We can go to capital um, improvements and uh, you know see all the things that we we're talking about. Um, so capital amount that's requested. Um, so here's all the uh, uh, um, Things and then you can see where it's um, itemized to, and then we have some graphs down here. 
shows what departments they came from, what the reason is for their requests, et cetera. It's a lot more thorough than what you've seen before. Um, debt, um, that's kind of the same as it was before. I won't go into that. The personnel schedule, all of you, the board of finance policies. And then it, when anyone comes here and they come into our website, all they have to do is hit print and you put in your email address. Um, and then you can select all and you're going to get a 200 page book or if you just want to go down into any one of these, these areas and just like see what the um, accounting budget is uh, you can do that and it will prep it it'll email it to you and then you can print it so i i think that um um I, I think that it makes it a lot easier for the folks in our town to go and find exactly what they want it's very intuitive how this works um and when the, the selectmen uh, finish their their model, then this will be up right away, and then you'll be getting the printed books, which will be easier for you to flip through. Um, so that's that's our new enhancement to the budget process for this year. And is the accounting software is that the reason is it tied to that? Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. Entry? No, no, it's not. Okay. So what's nice about this is, um, you know. I just give them the file and they upload it. And so I do the file in our accounting system. And now that I've gone through all of this work to set the whole thing up, next year I just copy it and then add to it or do whatever I want to do to update it. So it'll make the whole. And the next person that comes in and sits in the seat has everything all done for them. So, you know, it's very intuitive. And uh, well, well, that's like, you're, it's only as good as the, as the up. Keep upkeep, and, and so you know, I saw in there you had parks and recs. You, those those requests they had, every single one was in there. Right. So somebody inputted that. Was it you, or was it part of that budget process that they, when they went and did this year's budget process, it was populating. I did it this year because I don't trust them because I don't know what I'm doing. Well, right. I mean, what? That's your <laughs> In the future, in the future, I could let the department heads request yeah. their um, own capital. Once, once I know what I'm doing, I'll train them on how to do it. But this year, I didn't yeah, know what right, I was doing, right. so I wasn't ready for that. So um, that's a monumental task. Let's see, uh, bond and debtness uh, in, yeah, you know, in yeah, in for next year. We're going to start the year at twenty-three million dollars and change. I forget exactly what it is. You mean a total on five or the debt service yearly, or the total amount due? Number two, right here. Five oh, what's the debt annual. service going to be? Yeah, um, three million one ten. Well, it's slightly higher, uh, twenty-nine thousand. Thirty-eight thousand and change higher. Yes. Um, so the la last thing um, I wanted to mention. Uh, See, as I just wanted to go over the elderly benefit numbers. So for fiscal year 21, um, uh, we gave you a wrong number, Brad. Um, we spent 88,810, and the, the uh, 90,000 was the amount. Uh, the year before that, it was 95,000, and the year prior to that, it was 104,000. So actually, um, it's been going down um, over time. Uh, and I asked them why, and they just said because there's been a lot of turnover in town, moving people that are older are moving out, and so therefore those are the ones that are obviously recipients of this. So yeah, it was interesting. Um, actually, I came in today, and the number has gone down, uh, which I was a little surprised at. I don't have a problem leaving it where it is. Let's see where it goes for next year. I think it's well, if you don't use it, we don't lose it. Right. 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 Yeah. Uh, so. Let's see how that goes. Um, but I think we uh, are very comfortable where the number is in terms of uh, what people are requesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want the floor. So Leanne loves this stuff, as you can tell. Yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this stuff. But it is, you know, I don't know how many people are actually going to take the time to do it, but as far as transparency goes. It's there. And the other thing is when you're sitting there talking to somebody and they, they say, hey, what about this? You can direct them to yeah. research it themselves because the answers will be right there. Or I can print that section and email it to them yeah. too, which is nice. Well, it's, enough it's something the schools have had. It's no more budget books. No, you're going to get your, for the public, correct. You're going to get a budget book because it's, it's just easier to read. I think you can look it up, but you should have that. We'll, we'll still have a hard copy for us. 
the final budget book that the board of finance approved for the board of select Right. Yeah. So the overall budget right now is up about how much? Just under $2 million. Okay. And then what about increase in revenue? Um, so we've had, you want me to talk about well, we, um, so Norm, we figure we have about $300,000 in additional revenue, right? Is that yeah, the yeah, well, it's actually 400000 I double-checked today. So oh, okay. Sure. And we anticipate increasing, increasing uh, interest income from where it is this year, 75000 to uh, we haven't settled on a final number yet, but it's going to be uh, four to six hundred thousand because we can earn it. Here's the four. Well, <laughs> so the thing is, Brad, we, we've done landed, I shouldn't say we um, landed these numbers a month ago. She's refined them. She put something in front of me today and using a two and a half percent return. You, we can, I believe, comfortably budget the, the higher number. Yep. Okay. And well, listen, at two and a half percent, there's going to be two and a half percent money. It's not even interesting. Yeah. No, I'll tell you, we're banking on four and a half percent. Yeah. We're not banking on four and a half percent. We are using a conservative number. Four and a half. Four and a half it would yeah, a lot higher. higher. Yeah. But I don't and know that that's the appropriate number. No, it's kind of correct. That's good. Or what's a tenth of a mil worse? A, a tenth what? A tenth of a mil. A tenth of a mil. Hundred thousand. About two, two, forty, two fifty. So the budget's fifty million. Oh. Um, okay. That's uh, so five hundred thousand. <laughs> and and five hundred. Five hundred fifty. I can't believe. Couldn't be five hundred. No, 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 no. No, it's not, John. No, no, no. We I think that, I, I think it's about a quarter of a million. Yeah, a little yeah, less. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we're right now uh, about two million. Yeah. So there's there's offsetting. No, I wouldn't. Let's not get into a mill rate discussion right now. Right. Okay. okay. Let me finish. <laughs> let 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 the board of selectmen present me with a budget. And then, then we're early, okay? So uh, let me just say a couple things under a report. Is sure. there any questions well, for me? I just wanted oh. to make sure, you know, yeah. my, I, I am done. I yeah. want to make sure, you know, um, you also have uh, the uh, youth and family and social services PowerPoints that were forgot to be handed out last week. I just gave us to you to have that. Okay. Um, and I just want to make sure that everybody has had Everything that they need, or if there's anything else uh, that you'd like you'd like to know about the budget, just let me know. You can email me, or or I'm happy to talk about it better. Yep. Whatever you need. I like the first one. Sorry, I think you better write one, Jack. Oh, excellent! It's an incredible, incredible asset. Thank you. Um, and for me, random question, real yeah. quick. When we when when we saw these budgets last year. Or last week or last meeting. When Sue presented, she kept talking about the benefits and how not she does not taking health insurance. Yes, and how the savings and the savings. And you sort of made it seem like it really wasn't a saving in her department. But then I noticed on the building department one, it it's the I don't same know situation, that, but I, it is. No, I don't think Sue is going off the town's health insurance for fiscal 24. I think she's already off it. Yes. Yeah, so oh, okay. okay. Sure. So, already, so that was something that happened. It already, it in, in, um, Gary, if I recall correctly, what she was trying to describe was sometimes it's a good idea to incentivize people yes. to get off of the insurance. And Carl was, I think, saying, I said, no, maybe, maybe not based on right. You know, and that's our builders have basically said, no, people are either going to take their insurance or not. Yeah. And we used to pay people over eight thousand uh, dollars, the folks that waived insurance. And now that is one thousand for a single, two thousand for a family. OK, thank you. Um, uh, speaking of. Contract negotiations where we negotiated stuff. We have 
we start supervisor negotiations tomorrow. It's a smaller union. It's nine or 10 people. Um, so we start those negotiations tomorrow at one o'clock. Um, if anybody uh, wants to be in the room, like you do with Board of Ed, like you've done with Board of Ed, you're more than welcome to be. It's not really a participatory role, but um, we technically are supposed to name our team um, before we enter negotiations. Um, I'm just going to leave it open. If you you can email me tomorrow, it's not a big deal because tomorrow's our ground rules meeting. So just have to let folks know. Um, if you haven't seen it, you're more than welcome to. If you have the time, um, so we're going to meet tomorrow. We are going to exchange proposals tomorrow. Um, talk them through. We probably won't do much negotiating. Um, there's that. We had a um, Really great meeting with uh, the new DECD commissioner, Alexander Dahm. As you all know, we did not get the uh, grant for Doc and Dine. I kind of pushed her on it and said, hey, I'd love to have you come down. Uh, we had a meeting last Thursday that um, I thought went about as well as it could go. We had just a room full of um, super professionals here who presented very well. Um, Honestly, I'm not sure the commissioner has ever been to Old Saber. Um, she's a New Haven folk. She's from New Haven. Young lady, probably 43. Would you prove to you? Yeah. I'd say. No, actually, I think I'm 70. Yeah, I was going to say younger. I mean, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, but <clears throat> dynamic. Um, so we, we had uh, Ray Allen, uh, Judy Sullivan, um, Torrance Downs, Chris Costa. Uh, myself, uh, Brett Elliott, um, Ed Casella, and John Kadama. Uh, did I already say Torn Sounds? Yes. Uh, yeah. And um, I'm probably missing somebody in there. Um, but uh, we kept it to under an hour for presentations because no one wants to be dictated to for over an hour. Um, I thought it was a great meeting. At the end of the meeting, I we got into a talk about affordable housing and what the town has done proactively on that. Uh, I took her up to the train station, um, showed her our gateway up there, and then we drove to the point, we got outside, and we took a look. Um, so it was a really good meeting. Um, I followed up with her and thanked her. Don't know what will come of it. I'll check in with her in a couple of weeks, but very good meeting. As you all know, we did not get that grant. That was 500,000 that we talked about. Um, I'm hopeful, but not expecting it, but I did say, I just basically said, look, we need some help here, um, in particularly with this property. So we'll see where that goes. Did, did she identify any other DECP monies that she didn't help? Not that day. She did not. Um, I will follow up with her on that, though. Um, so. Have they posted what, um, who the second round? Yes, yeah, so you, you can, you can, can go look that up. Yeah. Um, very widely available. Uh, I testified today um, at remotely because I didn't want to spend six hours up at the state capitol waiting to testify for three minutes, and they now allow you to do it remotely. Um, I think I've spoken about this in the past, uh, firefighter workers' compensation for cancer. Um, I sat on a, C a CCM subcommittee last year, and we came to an agreement whereby the state would try to fund it. Uh, each town would put in $10 per firefighter, which is a very small amount, but it would increase. Um, firefighters right now, uh, there's a lot of evidence that they get certain types of cancer more than the regular population. A lot of that has been due to PFAS foams that they fight fires with, but their gear has PFAS in it because the fire retardant, the gear does. So uh, apparently there's a movie out right now, maybe you guys have heard about it, about a woman in Massachusetts whose husband was a firefighter, Dee Benedetto, I think her name is. There's some sort of documentary. It made, it actually is getting, it was uh, debuted somewhere, got a lot of publicity. Um, and she's basically saying, it isn't the phone that's so bad, it's the gear, because the gear has PFAS in it. There are at least nine or 10 states that have entered into a class action against 3M and DuPont. Um, 
there's a lot of evidence out there that the UPFAS, a forever chemical, is something that um, can cause cancer. So uh, I basically said, you know, I don't know if it's uh, Attorney General Tong's intent to join these lawsuits. I know he's a busy man. Uh, he's done very well on the opioid side. Um, but, you know, there could be some funds that might become available either to fund firefighter cancer, um, a firefighter cancer fund, which is working right now. Firefighters can apply to a fund right now if they have cancer and be paid for uh, their medical or out of pockets. But this bill would cause workers compensation insurance to spike in Connecticut. That's why I testified against it. It is CCM in Kerma's position that it is a bad bill. It is going to make it out of labor, the labor committee. Um, I'm hopeful from there, it will be put off to a subcommittee to come up with a solution. Um, by the way, one of the other bills, just this is um, talking a little bit out of school. There's a bill up there to allow striking private sector workers to collect unemployment insurance. So you'd strike and you'd be getting paid unemployment insurance. There are some interesting arguments uh, up there. So that is a bill that is probably also going to come out of labor. Um, I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, lastly, I have a MIRA meeting tomorrow, a board of directors meeting tomorrow. I have them more often than I care to have them. Um, we're doing the budget for the towns next year. Uh, we're probably going to keep the tonnage rate at about where it is right now. We're at 116. It might go to like 119. Um, Mira is just flush with cash right now. And um, what I'm hoping will happen, Hartford wants this money uh, for remediation of the site. What I'm hoping will happen uh, ultimately with what Mira has in funding that uh, uh, a significant amount of that money will go to Hartford for remediation, but they don't need it all. And that millions, maybe seven to 10 million, will come back to the member towns. I'm in discussions with Norm Needleman, Senator Needleman, about creating a regional waste authority for our towns that all go to the Mira station in Essex, um, uh, that's the direction Deep wants us to go in. I responded to Katie Dykes uh, not too long ago. I said, right now, Mira has 21 pounds in it. That's a regional waste authority. That's exactly what it is. How, you want to make it smaller and less efficient? They know exactly what they're doing. Um, so it may be that some of the expertise could get peeled off into a regional waste authority. And it, because well, I don't have a former regional waste authority, then hire an executive director. And then you have to have all the si towns sign contracts to guarantee their garbage so that you can guarantee a price per ton. I mean, it, it's not like you just, hey, let's form a RWA and have at it. It doesn't work like that. So, um, there's a lot of planning. So we, I think for fiscal 24, it's going to be Mira. Um, my position at these board of directors meetings, and it will be tomorrow, I have a contract with Mira through 2027. If they want to break the contract, you can pay me. But if we don't form a regional waste authority, I need a place to send my garbage. And I have a price locked in through 2027 and not to exceed Chris. So that has been my position. So yeah, you can break Mira up, but Old Saybrook needs a place for the garbage to go away. And um, it's very easy for towns in the center of the state. They have options up there. They have play, people bid on their garbage. There's no options down here. There's one or two options. There's not a lot for our for where our garbage can go. And one of the other comments that I'm getting at these board of directors meetings is, why should Mira continue to subsidize Old Saber? Not Old Saber, but the towns that remain in Mira. 
To which my response is, well, they've been doing it for 10 years and you were part of Mira and now you don't like it. That's what's happening. And um, so tomorrow there's going to be a little bit of that with the mayor of Hartford. I don't doubt it. Um, it's a public meeting if you want to join. But um, that, you know, it's it's not optimal, but um, something has to happen. And I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. There's there's some technical assistance money to form regional waste authorities, but I don't know how much there is. And meanwhile, the commissioner hasn't even been reappointed by the legislature because they're playing games with her a little bit. A lot of yeah, you know, a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. She is a look. I I I'm I'm not deep into the weeds on why, but she's a very smart person and she's trying like hell. And maybe she's not pleasing everybody, but um, anyway, that that's that's all I have for that. Okay. It's a complicated issue. Any ladies uh, on reports? Comments from board members? So I've got a comment. Um, I hope you bear with me. The um, I, I think that the budget is really the kind of key policy document of any organization. Um, and one of the reasons why I wanted to be on the Board of Finance is that's, you know, that's where the action is. And I commend the fact that kind of over the last few years, um, that kind of overriding policy has been how do we keep the mill rate low as possible? And we hear all the time how well run Old Saybrook is. The, you know, part of the translation of that is we have a very low mill rate. We keep that mill rate. And so I, I think that that's admirable. But I think that what happens when we have a focus on, you know, kind of year in, year out, the low mill rate, we, we begin to lose a focus on the future. And that what I began to hear in some of the presentations that we heard were some of the gathering clouds on the horizon relative to the future. We had Chief Spear talking about the fact that, you know, part of the reason, not the whole reason, but part of the reason why the turnover is because he he is finding or his his officers are finding that better benefits, better salaries in, in nearby locations, not like they have to go out of state. They just have to go to a, a different town nearby. And that, you know, that was negotiations. And we clear, clearly they got something and we got something in that process. But the end of the line, after 10 years, we're in this position now where we have this benefit schedule, which is um, not competitive. And we may find ourselves uh, falling farther and farther behind. Um, we heard similarly from the library director where she was alluding to the fact that she was spending a lot of time interviewing people because there was a churn that was taking place again uh, losing highly qualified candidates due to uh, the benefits that were available through the town and so um i think that you know carl you've touted as as a major success the issue about uh the you know the town planner uh, no longer being here, being able to divide up those responsibilities. And that probably worked for a while, but I'm concerned that it's not a um, an organization that's going to work over a longer period of time. And that, you know, I, right now we've got so much coming over the transom for zoning and for what kind of Chris Costa has to, has to work with. Um, that it seems to me we have, you know, we've kind of we got razor thin on the number of bodies that we have available to do the work in town hall. And it's really, a lot of it is really very important work. And the result of that is twofold. One is we could end up burning out some really key people, which I'm, I'm concerned about because there's two or three people that if we lose in this town, it would be major losses. But also we don't have um, the opportunity for what would be even minimal succession planning, you know, if somebody goes, who's got the knowledge behind them to be able to do it? And we heard it a little bit from, from the registrars the, the other day. And so what I'm, I guess, long way of saying, what I'm really hoping is that, you know, we're not going to solve 
all of the problems um, or in any of these issues in any one budget. But as you and the you know and the board of selectmen put together the budget that you'll be presenting to us, I'm hoping that not only is there a focus on how do we keep the mill rate as low as possible, which is admirable, but also how do we create kind of the best future for the town? How do we recognize that some of these clouds are out there and we need to at least create a path for how, how we want to get there and use this budget as maybe the first step on that path. So that's, you know, trying to get to you before all of a sudden, you know, at our next meeting, you guys will have voted on this and it'll be in front of us. So I'm trying to just put this information in front of you beforehand. I, I uh, disagree with some points. Our population has not changed in the last 10 years at all. Um, what's changing in this town is there's a lot of uh, summer people that are people are buying homes but don't live here all the time. And the the, the people are we've got a lot of wealthy people in this town. And you know, they don't use our school systems. Um and I I feel as though that um you know I this town doesn't have a lot of room to grow. I don't know how many lots are available now. The last I knew it was around 180 lots are available to build in a period. And that's probably an old number from 10 years ago. So I don't I don't see a big growth in this town. The real issue in this town, when you talk about the library and the staff, is that there's no place for these people to live and, and work here. Um, where they can go to other areas and they can, you know, go to Blastonbury and there's places to live. And, you know, I see it in the industry. I mean, uh, you know, people are coming down here. They're buying a house for cash, spent a lot of money. They put a lot of couple hundred thousand into it. And I I think that uh, I think we're doing an excellent job as far as uh, for what, you know, we're not experiencing any growth. There is no growth in this town. Yeah, but where's the chicken and where's the egg, you know, in that? Yes, uh, there is no growth and there has been some changes. We certainly have some changes in population as we saw through the youth and family services numbers about you know, who was in the you know, their, their service and what um, Jan Peruccio presented relative to what's going on with the, um, the make demographic makeup. Yeah, a lot of that goes. A lot of that's to do with the type of properties we have in this town that used to be motels, hotels, or motels, and now are weekly rentals. Right. And there's no way around that that we can, I feel as though it can be monitored. So that's causing a real problem in this town because we, pro I don't know how many of these units we have. One of them just did get torn down, but there, there are a lot of weekly rentals around here that the people are coming in from New Haven. And that's where we got 97 students that now speak a second language of English. And, you know, this is, this is where this all comes out. But um, it's unfortunate that those places have become weekly rentals. Um, and I don't Brett, if we were in a position where we actually had a plan for how we're going to move forward with creating workforce housing, and you're right, maybe we don't have a whole lot of uh, places to build, but we do have some. And so we could be moving housing sets of apartments in various different places of town Barbara. which would alleviate i feel so we've done an excellent job the i'm, town I'm itself, not suggesting that we town, haven't done an town, excellent job doing it up point. down at the other end of town on their on their expense this project at the foot of main street that was about 180 units about 20 percent of those are subsidized housing these hotels or motels are subsidized housing the state is paying for those people to live there those checks are coming from the state. It, it's a it's a statewide. I mean, we know this. It's a it's an issue in the state of Connecticut, affordable housing, mm -hmm. which is this. Um, so yeah, uh, I I hear what you're saying, and um, uh, I'm not going to go. I mean, I think there's arguments. Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, I think there's arguments both ways in terms of. You know, uh, whether land use and you know, should we have one more full time person at the library? That there's so many positions at the library. Um, you know, I don't know how many more should be full time. So that that's, uh, I will.
carve out and say, I think the police department is up for grabs in terms of why <laughs> it hasn't been as successful yeah. uh, over the last 10 years. And it is a common refrain by the chief. Oh, the first selectman, you know, it's a backhanded compliment. Done such a great job, uh, you know, that officers are leaving. He's done that good a job. You know, it's like, you know, uh, it's a pretty nice town to work in, too. Um, so um, the other thing is they get overtime. You, When you're looking at salaries of police point and stuff, and you compare them to what they're getting with overtime, Look in the last yeah, year's oh budget. God, it's ridiculous. The right. overtime is it's called the road stream. Anyway, road road. it's a it's it's point well taken. You know, I understand what you're saying in terms of, but I, I'm not so sure that it's a lot different anywhere. It's hard to find a planner, as you probably know. I mean, Clinton looked high and low, uh, and they finally did get a planner. I do think Chris is quite capable uh, of all that, but I hear. You were just making a comment, so we'll leave it at that. Okay. Anyway, um, comments from the chair. The only thing I wanted to say, I'm not the chairman, I'm the vice chairman, <laughs> but uh, you're just acting. I, uh, I would like to see in the future that when people come uh, present their budgets, I would like to have them in person. That's my personal opinion is we come here as volunteers and we're here. And if these people are coming in and asking for 300, 600,000 or whatever, I think that we deserve them to come in and present their budget. That outrageous. And, and, and because what I'm afraid of is to have it going the other way. And the next thing you know, the police department does it online. And then the school department does it online. And it's like, why are we here? You know, yeah. so I, and I think that we, we deserve to have them show up for their request. So that's my personal feeling. But we offer hybrid meetings for every meeting in town now. That's the challenge. We, 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 yeah, we do. But when you're going to, you know, it's just like when you're going to go somewhere, you put on your suit. I want them sitting at the chair and a good presentation. We do offer it. And, uh, and we're asking, you're asking them basically to come to one meeting. Right, right. Exactly. And, uh, I'm not disagreeing because I made the same comment to Carl when we were discussing the, the grant application, right? Remember that? We talked about that because they were not going to come here in person. And I thought that was wrong. If you're gonna if you're gonna partner with the town, you need whether it's you or a representative, you have you need to be here. And I had the same comment. So I I I, I get it. Yeah. And I feel that way with our you know, if somebody's coming in for a large sum of money. Yeah, sure. person. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Can I, motion to adjourn. Well, the um, we had two budgets that were presented to us that we didn't really have a chance to discuss. Um, and that is the Board of Education and the Police Department. And sh should we schedule a time? I, I guess I'm looking at you, but I'm thinking of, of, of the committee. You should look amongst yourselves for that. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, so why don't we do that for the next? You want to have them both come in the next meeting? It's, it's, yeah, I, 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 don't, yeah, I think it's going to be a long time. Plenty of time. Yeah. Okay. You guys should. Well, there's their budget. Is in, meeting for the annual budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, don't, yeah. they don't have uh, their budget finalized yet. The school they don't. Right. That's and correct. that's not until like in the end of they March. Technically, don't have to have it until March first. Right. To the board. So, so right now you'll be at the fourteenth, hopefully voting on board selecting budget, which would mean general we, government. Right. Which would mean twenty first. We would we would have it. Right. You'll have. Will, will they have it? Yes, yeah, they yeah. will have it. Yeah. So will that be a presentation? But I'm just thinking from a time meeting timing standpoint relative to then the police department. You you um <laughs> you could certainly have another department in that night. I don't think the changes are going to be so extensive that you're going to need to digest them for an hour and a half. So okay. um, and you'll uh, send it out beforehand. Then. Yeah, and so we could have the. Um, Police come the twenty first, and then the school comes the first meeting in March. That crazy. First meeting in March. We have scheduled for the public hearing. Well, don't they need to come before they? The public hearing now. No, before the board of ed approves it. Say again. Do they need to come before the board of ed approves it? 
does who need to come? Yes, you, when do they have to? The Board of Ed needs to get you a budget by March 1st. Oh, okay. And I thought they'd already, I thought what, what the superintendent proposed. They it. have pretty much approved their budget, yeah. but technically for charter to the Board of Finance by March 1. I see. So, so the next meeting, sure, you can discuss. Then you have all of, you know, you have all of March. You can have a special meeting uh, and cancel another. I mean, you, you know, if you feel like you're going to run out of time, uh, you have March 8th, you have. 16, yeah. It's like you have five Tuesdays in March. Plenty of time. So, do we want to do the police the next meeting or do we want to postpone to March? Do you want to let him have a shot at yeah. both of those first? Yeah, why don't we Why don't we just we'll, we'll do the general government at the next meeting and we'll bring in the police and then we'll bring in the board of it. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. We could do that. Yeah. And and frankly, I mean, we can talk about whether others want to see the see the board. I mean, I I I only have a couple questions that I could just send and, and probably have, have answered. I don't know whether other members of the you know of, of the committee had have questions for the board of that or not. But because we've seen the presentation now the question is you know, if there's q a that we need to have so and there could be changes to both budgets before you see them then. right mm -hmm. okay we may have a motion to adjourn